When dealing with proportions in the rejection region method, the key is to remember that as long as you have a big enough sample size, our rejection region and our test statistic will come from the normal distribution. Now, the reason the z-score looks different is because we're testing something about a sample, but this time we're referring back to the sample distribution for p hat, not for x bar. So that means on the top of the uh, z-score, we have to use p hat and the hypothesized proportion. And on the bottom, we have to use the standard error for proportions. So in your textbook, they use pi instead of p naught. That's the only difference. It's actually the same values. So we're going to go into three examples, and these will all be left tail, two tail, or right tail. So you'll get to see each one and get an idea of how it works. So in this first example, we're told in a small, a small town, we have some residents and 1,759 of them stated they support a new candidate for mayor. We want to know if this is evidence to say the new candidate has support of more than 75% of residents. Okay, so the question and the claim, the statement we're testing is about a proportion. So this is wondering, is the proportion bigger than 0.75 versus is it smaller than 0.75? All right, so that means that what I should be doing is using a one prop Z test but we're gonna use the rejection region method for this. And so the Z there tells you, because of the central limit theorem for proportions, we're able to use a Z distribution to actually do this. And so that means that my test statistic is actually gonna be a Z. And so my test stati uh, statistic Z is gonna be equal to P hat, my sample proportion minus P naught, what's hypothesized divided by the standard error of this, which is P naught times one minus P naught, over n, something I gotta be very careful about within calculator. Now p hat, we'll calculate over here, the sample proportion would be the 1759 divided by the 2350. Now you don't wanna round this too much because uh, it can really affect your, your test statistics, so I got 7485 for this. Okay, now when I plug all this in, I get 0 0.7485 minus 0 0.75, and then this is divided by the square root of 0.75, times 0.25, all divided by 2350. And so when you calculate this, which you should get, and you should make sure you get the same thing, is negative 0.17. Okay, so now the next step is to actually set up my rejection region method, or my rejection region, so I can use the rejection region method. So this is standard normal distribution with a mean of zero. And this is a right tail test, so I'm gonna put alpha on the right-hand side. So this is alpha, and our alpha here is 10%. So what I need is Z alpha such that 10% of the area is to the right. So I can use inverse normal because we're talking about Z. Inverse normal though, once area to the left, so that'd be 90% of the area to the left because the total is 100%. So when I do this, I get, uh, I get positive uh, 1.28. Okay, so that's my cutoff. Obviously my test statistic, if I look at it, is nowhere near that. 0.17 is much closer to maybe about right here. And so it's definitely not in the rejection region, so that means that I fail to reject H naught. Okay, so fail to reject H naught. Once I fail to reject H naught or I reject H naught, then it's simply an interpretation. And so if you fail to reject H naught, it means you had no evidence for HA. HA was what we were testing, so we would say there is no evidence. Uh, the candidate has support of more than 75% of residents. And so again, if this is, if my uh, test statistic ended up in the shaded region, then what I would say is, uh, yes, there is evidence. I would have rejected H not. Okay, let's take a look at another tail test. Okay, so this one's from your textbook. And so it tells us that we had a recent sample of employees nationwide and uh, that have 401ks and 18% of them had borrowed against it. And so a random sample of people at a local company found only 14 out of 100 had borrowed from it. So based on this, can we say that this particular company, if you were to look at everybody in the company, had a lower proportion of borrowers when you compare it to the national rate? In other words, we're wondering is, can we say that the proportion at this company, so I'll put a little C on there, the proportion at this company overall for the whole population of people working in that company has a borrowing rate less than 18%. So again, it's a P because we're talking about a proportion here. So that means I'm going to use a one prop Z test. 
And so what I need before I can do my test statistic is uh, p hat. And so I'm going to say, okay, p hat is equal to uh, the number in my sample divided by the total, number of successes over the total, so it's 0.14. And so now I can count my or figure out my test statistic. So if you were actually to do a one prop z test on your calculator, you would automatically get this as part of your p value. So sometimes that's a shortcut. You can go in, do a p value method, and you actually get the test statistic as well. But I'm going to do it by hand. So I'm subtracting 0.18, dividing by the square root of 0.18 times 1 minus 0.18, which is 0.82, and then divided by the sample size, which is 100. Okay, when I calculate this, I get negative 1.04. So now what I need to do is set up my rejection region. And so this is again, Z. So I'm gonna be able to use inverse normal to figure out my cutoff. So this is a left tail test. That means I need to put alpha in the left-hand side. So alpha here is 0.025. And so what I wanna do is say, okay, what is Z alpha that has area to the left 0.025? Well, that would just be inverse norm of 0.025 because inverse norm if you plug in area to the left, it gives you a z-score, and so this is negative 1.96. Looking back at my test statistic, we're not quite there. We're maybe almost there, maybe something like this. We're definitely not all the way at negative 1.96. So this, as well as the previous one, is a fail to reject. So I fail to reject H0. So that means that it's not possible to conclude. So I want to answer the question, which was, is it possible to conclude that the company had a lower proportion of borrower, borrowers? I would say no. It is not possible to conclude the company had a lower proportion of borrowers. And so this is important when I'm interpreting, I want to make sure I'm addressing the question as well, right? So this is true whether you're doing your re own research or textbook question. You got to make sure you address what you were testing. So I made sure to do that in my answer. So we've seen a right tail, we've seen a left tail. Let's take a look at a two-tail test. Okay, so this is also from your textbook. And it says that uh, uh, based on a recent article in the Wall Street Journal, 39% uh, of consumer scam complaints are about identity theft. This is actually data for the United States. So suppose we take a random sample of 90 complaints and of those 40 were regarding identity theft. This really is open-ended. It said what conclusion should be reached about the statement made by the Wall Street Journal. Well, the thing is their statement is an H naught, so we gotta be careful about what conclusion we can reach. So their statement is that the proportion equals 0.39 versus the proportion does not equal 0.39. Okay, so we got that set up. And so now what I need to do is calculate stuff for the sample. First of all, I'm gonna need p hat. And p hat is the proportion in our sample that had uh, consumer complaints of this type. That'd be 40 out of 90. And so again, I don't wanna to round too much here. And so when I calculated this, I got 0.4444. It keeps going, but I think this is good enough to get a good test statistic. This is another reason why uh, the calculator might be more useful for this. Okay, so I take my sample stati uh, test statistic or my sample statistic and I subtract the hypothesized statistic. I divide by the standard error, which is going to be 0.39 times 1 minus 0.39, which is 0.61 divided by my sample size 90. And so when I calculate all this, I get 1.058. Okay, so now I need my region. And so I say, okay, this is a Z distribution. And this is a two-tail test, so half of alpha goes on each side. So alpha is 10%. So I'm going to put 0.05 over here, 0.05 over here. And then remember that uh, the mean is zero for standard normal. And so I'm going to have a Z alpha. And then this is going to be the same number, but it's going to be a negative Z alpha. And so the question is, which one's easier to find? Well, inverse normal takes area to the left. So I could say this is going to be inverse norm of 0.05. And when I calculate that, I actually get uh, 1.64, negative 1.64. That means this is positive 1.64. Okay, so now I look up here and I say, well, my z-score was 1.058. That doesn't reach into either of these rejection regions. So, so far, all of these have been a fail to reject H0. That can absolutely happen. That shouldn't freak you out. So I get 1.058. doesn't go into either rejection region. So just as before, this is a fail to reject.
Sometimes students get nervous about that on a test. It can absolutely happen. With samples, you're not sure what's going to happen until you actually go and test the data. Now, in this case, this is a very open-ended question. It says, what conclusion should be reached? It would be incorrect to say that the Wall Street Journal is right. All we can say is we have no evidence that they're wrong. We cannot prove H0, not possible to prove H0, but we failed to reject it, right? So all we can really say is there is no evidence that the percentage they stated, so we could say something like the quoted percentage is incorrect. Again, we cannot say that they're absolutely correct. There's no way for us to do that because we can never prove an equality statement. We cannot prove H0. We can only test it against HA. And so this is one of those things about how we set up our questions. If they had said something like more than 39% or less than 39%, we would be able to come to a stronger conclusion. But because what we're testing is H0, we can only say there's no evidence that they're wrong. We can't say that they're right.